It happened again. I, I can't believe it happened again. Hi, my name is Globku. I am a massive Bleach fan, very hyped for its return, and I have a YouTube channel that covers anime games. So, it may be very surprising for you to know that I really haven't played any Bleach games in the past. A flaw that I need to plug right now, I cannot let this go any longer. Recently, I played Soul Resurrection on the channel. That was my very first time playing Soul Resurrection. And now I wanted to take a look at something else, maybe Shattered Blade that came out for the Wii. So naturally, I went out and grabbed a copy of Shattered Blade Blade, and once again, I spent way too much money. <laughs> to play Shattered Blade, I need a Wii, and I never had a Wii before, so I bought the console. Now, because it's a used console, a used Wii, it didn't actually come with a full package. It only came with a Wiimote, which means I needed to buy a nunchuck separately. On top of that, the Wii Remote sometimes, for some specific games, needs a plug-in that's called the Motion Plus. I don't know if Shattered Blade needs this or not, but just in case. And you might think, okay, that's the console, that's the game, that's a lot of accessories, we're pretty much done. No, this is the cable that comes with the Wii. I can't capture anything with this. So I need an HDMI converter, not any converter, something that converts this, which looks like a big display port uh, thing. It's a proprietary Wii converter. Uh, so yeah, I've also I also bought that the Wii to HDMI and I mean yes There is emulation and I could do it some other way. Well, no, actually I couldn't one piracy is bad Don't pirate. I mean if you own all of this feel free to use the emulator to me That is fine. It's a legal gray area still, but I, I think you're allowed to but I meant I still had to spend all this money Maybe didn't have to spend it on the converter But I still had to buy all these accessories and etc because shattered blade is a game that is played exclusively with motion controls. I'm gonna set all this up, I'm gonna play the game all day, and I'll tell you more about it tomorrow. Bleach. Bleach? That's it? Shattered Blade. It's right there. Read the goddamn title. Okay, so this is a fighting game and most of the roster is locked at the very start. So you gotta play story mode. For story, you pick a character and each character plays basically the same story with some minor differences. Each character's story takes around 20 minutes to complete and they all pick up right after Aizen's Rebellion. The blade that was gonna execute Rukia has shattered and Ichigo cannot go back home unless he gathers these shards from the broken blade because they contain enough power to open a gate back to the human world. The the problem is, everyone else is also looking for the shards for their own reasons. So you fight against a bunch of characters and by the end it turns out it was all a lie. You don't need the shards to go back home. This was all a plot by this game's villain, Arturo Plateado. Hang on a minute. Holy crap, that... That's not Grimjaw? I thought that was Grimjaw for sure. That's totally Arturo, the original character for this game. I got clickbaited, and if I got deceived by this, I bet a lot of people fell for it as well. Oh, they knew exactly what they were doing. The green hair, the mask like that, yeah, massive clickbait. Anyway, Arturo deceived you, but since you gathered the shards, he was able to get out of his prison. So you have to defeat him, and then you are graced with the best voice acting I've ever heard in a Bleach game. I'm vanishing! I'm vanishing! Yeah! That's the story, no matter who you play as. Everyone has a different reason to gather the shards, but in the end, it was Arturo, the one that was deceiving them all. So you defeat him, everything goes back to normal, and you do this over and over with different characters to unlock most of the roster. That's what the story is, but how does the game actually play? Well, like this. All the attacks in this game are done with motion. You can move around with this thumbstick right here, this button at the top toggles a sprint, and this button blocks. The rest is vertical slashes, horizontal slashes, and stabs. You can spam these attacks for as long as you have stamina, and then you also have this button, the A button on the remote. If you hold it down and then do a slash, it does a strong attack. This guard breaks and is armored. And the button on the back, the B button, triggers a special. So you have a special for a vertical slash, you have a special for a horizontal slash, and you have a special for the thrust. But that's not all. You don't just swing the remote, you can swing the nunchuck as well. Shaking it charges your meter, and once the bar is full, you go into Bunkai. An animation plays out, and now your character has a new set of moves and specials. Pretty neat. It's also a very basic game though. What you see is what you get. There's not a lot of depth in combos, it's very limited in the tech. It's a pretty casual anime fighter. But you could probably tell that already since it's using motion controls, and also these animations are way too long. After a couple of battles, they really start to drag. Also, I get the appeal of motion controls on the Wii, but it really does not fit fighting games like this. I don't feel like I'm Ichigo slashing up enemies. 
If this was a first person game or maybe a behind the back third person camera and the attacks were mimicking my moves with the Wii then maybe I would feel that motion immersion. But in a fighting game which has a sideways view like this most of the time, what are we doing here? There's a total of eight stories to play through, like I said they're mostly the same and the last story is through the villain's perspective so that's slightly different. They're all incredibly easy which makes the game very dull to play. There is one exception and that is Hanataro's story because this is the joke character of the game. He doesn't deal any damage whatsoever with most of his attacks. The one move that actually deals damage is the headbutt, which is a punishable move on hit. Beating the story with this guy, that was this game's challenge. And speaking of Hanataro, this roster has some wild choices. Not only Hanataro, but also Momo Hinamori, Izuru Kira, Ganju Shiba, definitely characters that I was not expecting to see playable in a Bleach game. And you don't just unlock characters through story mode, you also gotta play arcade mode, which is just a series of battles against eight random opponents. To unlock every character, the game asks you to beat arcade mode 16 times. Each time takes around 20 minutes, so add that up to the number of story modes and you've got around nine hours of content. And it might sound like, hey, that's a lot of content, but it's just random fights and very, very dull difficulty wise. Grim Joe is also playable though, you gotta put in the work to unlock him, but I guess that makes this clickbait a little less evil. But this being a fighting game, I had to test it out against someone locally, which means you can go ahead and just add another pair of these to the shopping cart and also add a Rene. How much did you cost? This game's single player is boring as hell, as you could probably tell. It's definitely built as a fun, casual fighting game, so this is probably where it will shine the most. Let's see what happens. Bunkai! <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, we had a good time. It was immediately obvious that we weren't laughing with the game, but rather laughing at it. But once we embraced the garbage, we had a good time with how ridiculous it all was. I mean, there's literally a rock, paper, scissors mechanic every time your strong attacks clash. And half the time, the motion sensor doesn't even read the direction of your swing properly. It was basically picking up a character, finding something broken, winning a match, and picking another character, repeating the process. We enjoyed that for the one hour that we played, and uh, I think both of us would definitely be happy to never do it again. It's definitely not something that's worth the full price, let alone buying a console specifically to play this game, but I guess that's the kind of dumb things that we do on the channel now. Subscribe now for more dumb things, click the button down below. And with this game, I've now played the only two Bleach games that came out on home consoles in the West. That's it. There were a bunch of Japan-only games and a few games also came out for the Nintendo DS, the handheld, but as far as home console games, it was this and Soul Resurrection for the PlayStation 3. And I gotta say, not having played these back when they came out, I didn't miss much. It's kind of baffling how big of an anime Bleach was and how little we got as far as video games go, both in quantity and quality. And I can't help but wonder, is the return of Bleach going to change any of that? Because if this was the stuff that was coming out when Bleach was at its peak of popularity, is the return of Bleach really gonna change that? Somehow I doubt it, but as usual, I hope I'm wrong. And that's gonna do it for today. Do you guys have any good memories of playing Bleach games? Let me know in the comments. I might even try out some Japan only stuff if you guys recommend it. And as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Globku, and I'll see you next time. Bye.